Welcome back, everyone. I'm Erica Pitsy for jackcotton.com, and I'm here with luxury real estate expert, author, and agent Jack Cotton. And we are doing step two of the seven steps to breaking into luxury real estate. And we're talking about sweat, but uh, not the gross kind. No, we're not sweating with the oldies, no. <laughs> anyway, no, <clears throat> sweating. Everyone in business have heard, has heard of a SWOT analysis, analysis, SWOT, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I just changed the last two letters from OT to ET. So let's go through them right now. Sweat the leaders. Who are the, the leaders in your luxury market? Who are the people you're going to be competing against when you break into this new market? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? E stands for everything they do, and T stands for turn things around. This is how you create USPs, meaning selling propositions that are unique to you, but bring value to the luxury client because everyone else is doing the opposite. So I'll give you some examples. So when I went to agents across the country and had them do a sweat analysis of the market leaders, a lot of them said the market leader was privileged. They had a sense of entitlement. I mean, they had a sense of entitlement. So if you turn that around, I feel privileged to be on this listing appointment, not entitled to the listing. Uh. That's, that's a big factor. And that's a huge USP. That's a huge you know, difference in how you're conveying yourself. I was talking to an agent today in Atlanta, and he's out for a $1.9 million listing. And what the seller told him is that every single person I've talked to, except for you, feels like they're entitled to this listing when they show up. Mm. And they don't even want to show up until I'm ready to sign on the dotted line for a contract. You did a market analysis. You did a presentation. You act like you're privileged to be here. And he said, I am. So he's getting the listing. So a lot of um, agents in some markets do email. So let's do direct mail with real paper. A lot of them uh, never show their own listings. Let's make that one of our USPs. I'm always present during the showing of my property. We covered that weeks ago, how to show real estate. So a lot of these entitled agents just take a listing and they never show up at the house again, even when it's millions of dollars. So that's we turn that around. I'm always present for the showing of your house. So that's a turnaround. Some agents, some um, in the high end, they don't want to cooperate with other brokers, so they, they offer a really skinny co-fee. They don't want to pay you what you should be getting. They want to keep most of the commission for themselves, mm -hmm. which is great, I guess, but it's not really in the best interest of their client. So having a strong co-fee is a great USP in many markets. Pampering co-op agents sort of goes along with this one. Making it easy for them to make appointments to show you listings. Not handing stuff directly to their buyers. We covered all this a few weeks back, but this is a great USP. Sellers don't know when you go to a listing presentation. They don't really think about how you cooperate with other agents. Most people don't cover that in a marketing presentation. So it's a great USP to talk about the risk Carlton treatment you give other agents in your market. It's a great T for your USP. A lot of people in this market talk about staging. We talk about market preparation. We covered that also a few weeks back. But this is how you, you, you look at the people who are leading in the marketplace now, the people you want to compete against, you look at what they do, and you turn it around. Now, going back to what we discussed earlier, <clears throat> we don't compare them, we don't diss them. Luxury is beyond compare. But you talk about, this is what I do, and this is why I do it. Make sense? Makes so sense. So that's how we create our own USPs, our own unique selling propositions. And the important thing is they have to bring value, they have to add value, not just be different for the sake of being different, but to really bring that value to the client. Because in the end, you're trying to set yourself apart here. Exactly. You hit the nail on the head because, you know, as a rule, real estate agents are becoming generic. And the only thing that separates them is the fees. The last thing you want to be in luxury real estate is generic. You've got to be different and better and add value. All right, that's step two. We've got step three coming up next week, and that has to do with gatekeepers. We're going to storm the gates next week. All right, that should be interesting. And, of course, you can always get luxury real estate advice from our expert, Jack Cotton, here at LuxuryRealEstateUnplugged.com.